Hi, um, I'm a practice-based researcher working in the film field of digital media production. My specialisms in animation and visual effects, post-production and inter interactive design have combined to enable me to produce work in the medium of video games. My viewpoint on martial arts is influenced both by my practice of karate and by my training in stage combat for theatre and film. My real motivation for this project is that I want to fight Bruce Lee. <laughs> either in a virtual or augmented reality fight simulator. Video games provide a safe space to play, a sandbox in which we can engage in activities without fear of real-world consequences. To some extent, we can already interact physically and spatially with video games. And this project, although starting small and a work in progress, uh, the research is designed to evolve into an exploration of physical interactions between martial artists in a virtual dojo. The idea of animating Bruce Lee is not new. The UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championship by Electronic Arts, successfully brought Bruce Lee to the console platform. This is a mixed martial arts sports simulator. I'm not trying to emulate this. Um, I'm going to play some clips from this game. And I want you to ask yourself how much of Bruce's style is visible in this. For the victory, Bruce Lee taps out. Oh my God, I cannot believe it. <laughs> so we've heard a lot about Bruce Lee. Uh, is this the Bruce Lee we know and love? And uh, uh, so I think this can be approached differently. I'm proposing that a more authentic Bruce Lee is possible, and my work is an experiment, in, experiment exploring this goal of realness. Not necessarily actuality, but a representation of Bruce Lee as I know him in my mind. To achieve this, I've set about conducting a kinetic an analysis, kinetic being movement, to enable an authentic animated reconstruction of Bruce Lee's fight moves. What I'm presenting today is the primary stages of development towards this goal, and we're, uh, the work I've done so far on creating a prototype of a 2D Street Fighter game, star game. The animations I've produced will be further refined and eventually ported to a VR application. So analysis of 2D film has its own issues. I've been working with uh, a computer vision software called OpenPose, developed by Carnegie Mellon University. They've released it um, for people to use. It is a nightmare to get to work. You should really just feed in your, your video and tell it what you need, but the uh, whole thing is on a GitHub repository for code. So uh, I, did spend, I did spend many weeks trying to work out how to do this from a command prompt. Command prompt. And, uh, but essentially what we're looking for is very similar uh, information that we would get to motion capture. You can see here these characters. This is a video source. They have all key parts of their bodies um, displayed on there. That was a list of all the different body types and you have all this information here that potentially this software can pull out from video and webcams. An example of the analysis that I've got from this, this is a still this still was cho well. This sequence was chosen because of the wide shot. Obviously, I've got the whole body pose in there. I can actually get a very good um, whole, whole pattern. With this, I can't get the the, haste, the face and the hands. So it's really just looking at body poses. You can see there where where the items are split. I'll get a data output from this, but I also get the visual rep representation. So I've I've really chosen one clip to to really focus on here and show you the different stages of development through this. Um, if you're a computer scientist, you can analyze this data and you can make predictions. Some people do uh, pose estimation and that sort of thing. But this is really quite a clean um, example of how this data is showing up. There's a few wobbles on that. Um, and this is a slow-mo. So I was really focusing on this kick as a specific move that Bruce Lee's doing. And I think it's quite, if it was done not on the stage, it would be done very impressively. He's actually not raising, he's not actually giving Chuck any chance of seeing this come in. He's not raising his body as he kicks. Um, so it's very much a cluded kick. Um, he does kick him on the back of the, back of the knee, but that's for stage safety. But he's um, 
actually demonstrating a very impressive technique. Um, you may disagree with me. That might be something never to do. But he's also kicking someone in the knee, which is not sportsmanlike. So that's another, another way of thinking about it. This is it in its raw form. So you can see here, just more clearly, this, that's what the data um, comes out like. The problems I've been working on is how to get that retargeted onto a character. Now, it's not something that's done already, so this is kind of state of the art as they've got that now. Um, so I'm working towards a solution to that, for that to automate it. To do this, I have bought myself a Bruce Lee. $45, you can buy yourself a very high resolution Bruce Lee from Sketchfab. Um, and if you know what to do with it, it is a good fun thing to work with. I have actually stripped out a lot of the information in there um, and I've made it low resolution so it's a lot easier to work with, especially in development, but I will be making the character a high res version of the character which will look like that um, in the piece. I've been working the one on the left. The arms folded isn't useful for me as a, an animator, but using this one, you'll see in the next stage we'll go through and show you how I can apply a skeleton to this so that I can deform the body and then it's a matter of constraining the body parts to the markers that we've worked on. So this is a for sale, it's commercial uh, by Leon. Can't quite read that on there. Um, so the process, one of the processes you can do to actually rig it, to put a skeleton inside it, is you can load it onto a website called Mixamo or there's other ones available or you can use a, a desktop software. This one I specifically used because it was compatible with the game engine software that I had chosen. You see there, I'm just flicking through the options. I've lined up the markers on the body parts for the knee, the elbows, the groin, um, and that, those aspects. And I'll actually go through and go to the detail of actually rigging each of the fingers so that those can be animated as well. So that comes out and it's, it's movable. It's applying a motion capture clip. This, this website has a a library of motion capture clips that you can apply very easily and uh, you can download. Unfortunately, most of them don't really fit the uh, category of authentic Bruce Lee. <laughs> Although I have, I have downloaded their flying kick to have an analysis of that because that will become in very useful at some point. Um, you've also got a uh, so you've got some, it's just good to actually see the character moving in there. It had one which is taunting the character, uh, which is actually tapping on his hand. You think, oh, why didn't they do the nose flick or, or something like that, or this come on action, because that actually would be usable. He, he never had a watch on. Um, although he did have a bracelet on in the, uh, in the model. So this is quite an interesting one, just to prove that the character works. This is a low resolution model. The colors have been changed to protect the innocent and uh, it's really just working in a, in a video game style at the moment. So we also thought about, I mean, I took some advice from a colleague, another animator, a colleague of mine, and he suggested, why don't you actually just get a practitioner in and motion capture all the moves you need? And I wondered about that, and I wondered about the authenticity of doing that. Again, it's kind of like, is it as authentic as going to the original source and working with that? Um, but at the same time, it's someone's interpretation of Bruce Lee's moves and it probably would get us a long, uh, a very close uh, match to what I'm trying to do. Also, as an animator, one of the questions that has come up through the research is how much am I putting my own opinions in there um, and my own in, uh, interpretation of this within it. So, should move on to the next stage now. So having that character and having the rig, um, I was then analyzing this data. Now you see the colors switch from side to side now and then. This means that the kind of the computer isn't actually knowing which character is which. So it's flicking the colors between them. So when it comes into the, this move, this is actually a slightly different move. This is where he ducks down and does a, a kick from the floor, um, Bruce does. And, uh, but that sort of thing causes noise and, and difficulties when you're actually just trying to constrain these uh, skeleton elements to this, this, what's essentially data, a point cloud data of uh, vector points. Another issue with working with a 2D film is that you don't get the three-dimensional 
aspects of it. You're only working on a 2D plane. So to an extent, you have to interpret that as you're moving forward and make the best judgment as you're working on it. So this is kind of lining up the, the visual reference within the animation software. Um, and that's the process of uh, the manual work that would go on top of this motion capture. And I think this example here is probably just using keyframes to the, this isn't keyframes at all, this is just lining up the, the model in there as well. Uh, this is actually the work of keyframing. You can see in the background you have got the, you can just about see, in a darker room you would you'd see that better. You can see where the, the image is showing through and there is a ghosting on there so you should be able to see through the model if, you've got a, if you're very close to the monitor. And so it's a matter of kind of constraining it, using the software, and also just tweaking it and making sure things are going right. Like which direction is the foot pointing? He seems to move his feet um, an incredible amount throughout, throughout his practice and throughout the, the, the bout here. Um, it's very interesting to see how that, that works. Also, I did notice while I was working on this, the camera pans. So the actual reference of the, where, the, uh, where these markers are is actually moving. So there's another process I need to put in there, which is stabilizing the shot so that it actually holds still. So I think he will drift slightly in the final animation that we're working to. Um, so the whole concept of this is to get this into a video game engine. And what we use in a video game engine is small clips. You may see this, so a walk is like two steps, the right foot and the left foot, and you will loop that. This is, uh, this is probably making, on this sequence, he probably jumps forwards and backwards um, about five times before there's some action. And that's quite interesting because that can really expand out the variety that you have within the character. And it gives a lot more depth to the character um, within that. So as we, uh, as we move forward, I've only got about three minutes left and then conclusions. Um, this should move through more to an example of how it will look when I have got these clips in there. So these rendered clips, are, that's one which is actually probably, again, I'll just wait for this to play through. So this is it when it's actually finished, um, the whole sequence. Um, there's a reasonable that it is quite rigid. It's something we'll go back and look at again. Um, and it is a characteristic of video. Sometimes people are rigid, but just to get that fluidity in there, I'll work with that as well. So I did mention game loops. What we'll be looking for in its simplicity or the game engine looks for is clips as short as that that really make that work. The example coming up is uh, the character in an environment, very much like a, a 2D fighting game. Um, and that's the, uh, the computer, jet, computer fighting character. We've got that, that moving through. So you're really working with the limitations of a game engine to try and make this work. So I think um, he's actually not bouncing around enough because the, uh, the software isn't letting him bounce. So you've got the animation of him rising up and down. So it's very level. So these kind of things need to be ironed out um, with the software as well. But it's a, and he's invincible. So but that, that's the easy bit to solve. But uh, future work and problems, there is a lot of problems. Uh, how do you do that same thing with the face? You can capture this data from the face and uh, how do you retarget that and make the face animate? That's quite a big job to get it ready for that, um, let alone kind of um, retargeting that and using that um, and getting that emotiveness from this very abstracted look here onto the character. And a lot of that is normally done using digital sculpting techniques um, within the software. So face and hands are actually as difficult in this case, there's more markers on, on the face than there are on the whole body. They're actually as difficult to work with as the body positions. So that's a key aspect to work on. Uh, so the automation of retargeting is a problem that um, people are still working on. 
Um, as that moves forward, as time goes on, we will be work that will become easier, and also we're looking for a solution for that. Marker switching I mentioned, when the, the computer doesn't know which character is which. Finding optimal scenes for analysis. The moving camera. The intensive manual labor for cleaning up and improving that, so I wasn't happy with that animation. It's a matter of what extra work has to be done to, to make that work. And the performance capture, face and hands to give it extra realism. So lastly, I want to talk about, so what? Uh, where is the work leading me? I think it's generated as many questions as answers. I'll try and summarize my current conclusions. Firstly, if the same process adds in a digital model of Muhammad Ali, can we run a simulation to definitively solve one of the top 10 most asked questions about Bruce Lee? I'm not answering this one, but my computer science colleagues would be able to come up with a justified probability based on simulations. What can be learnt about the relationship between cinematic performance and martial arts practice? As an animator, the act of recreating the motions on a frame-by-frame -frame basis provides an understanding of the rhythm and feints performed by Lee. An animator will work on 10 to 30 seconds of animation per day, spending eight hours Reviewing such a short fragment of Lee's performance provides a continuing appreciation of his style. Another question, are all martial artists performers? This is outside the scope of my research, but it continually nags at me to consider this. It keeps me mindful of Bruce's main career, acting, when considering his martial arts style. How do we respond to interaction with a virtual Bruce Lee? Do I really want to fight Bruce Lee? Do I want to be Bruce Lee? Do I want to be Chuck Norris? Do I want to be Bruce Lee's friend? Do I want to learn from Bruce Lee? I don't think this necessarily matters, but it's something that I'll find out as I progress with the project. Is there a value in pursuing authenticity? Indeed, I'm able to find, uh, if indeed I am able to find authenticity through an analysis of performance as a media practitioner, as well as a martial artist, I love both aspects of Lee's work, and uh, it's, I believe there's certainly an authenticity in his acting which stems from his rigorous training and thirst for knowledge. Uh, and lastly, it's fun, if you like that sort of thing. <laughs>